Borderless, a collaboration across continents. All things are delicately interconnected. Jenny Holzer. Borderless is a collaborative project born from the desire of eight artists across the world to stay connected after working together during the 2019 NeLab Opera Advanced Residency Programme. Katie Baldwin, Patty Hudduk, Yunmi Nam and Melissa Schulenberg, based in the USA, Kate McDonough from Ireland, Mia O oh and Mariko Jess, who live in Japan, and myself from the UK, were nicknamed Mokuhanga Sisters after a passing comment made to our group while together at NeLab. The Borderless project emerged in late 2019 as a means to encourage an ongoing dialogue between us as printmakers, artists and friends. The project was conceived at a time of growing political divide and separation within world news, with an intention to emphasise the community that exists across cultural and geographical borders through the nurturing of skills and the sharing of knowledge. Our collective group met and bonded in an open, borderless studio. While in residence together, the studio atmosphere was one full of ease, inspiration, concentration, support and laughter. As a group, we lived, ate and worked together under the commonality of our love and commitment to Mokohanga. Our ideas about art, printmaking and life flowed freely between us. We received skillful tuition from the master printmakers we'd invited to instruct us in the various techniques that supported our areas of interest. Goto Sensei helped us to hone our printing techniques under his expert eye. Kitamura-san, in collaboration with Hirai Sensei, expanded our learning in both carving and printing techniques, offering us privileged, in-depth demonstrations. Toshio Soyama-san gently guided us through the process of constructing Japanese Byobu screens, Makimono scrolls and Toji Hon books. Having made artist books for 20 years, I was eager to finally learn how to make a traditional scroll. I was awarded this rare opportunity by the late Tetsuo Soyama-san after meeting him in 2018. He lent me a Japanese textbook to follow the illustrations and decipher the instructions. It was only when returning to Milab in 2019 with the Mokohanga sisters that I received step-by-step -step tuition from his brother, brother Toshio Soyama-sensei that I was able to fulfil my ambition of making my first scroll. Upon completion of the makimono, I was immediately eager to make another one to consolidate the learning. As time passed on the residency, I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the artists I was spending long hours in the studio with, as well as for the exceptional teachers we were fortunate to be taught by. Working in collaboration with each of these artists cultivated a strong sense of community. The Borderless Project began as a way to sustain the energy and creativity of our residency meeting and has evolved over time to become a scaffold of supportive friendship artistic collaboration and mutual exchange. As Kate said to us all once, when I think of us as a group, I think of Keiko-san and her belief that Mokohanga would help bring about peace and friendship in a global way. The idea to collaborate with the rest of the group to create an edition of Scrolls was born. Borderless is an edition of 20 artist books containing eight Mokohanga prints printed predominantly with sumi ink, presented in a traditional Japanese scroll format. Borderless is a visual and emotional correspondence between us as artists across three continents. This dialogue in print is motivated by the desire to connect beyond the experience of the artist's residency, creating an intersection for us to comment and converse on the state of division in our respective countries. Initially, in part, a response to the UK's choice to leave the European Union and the former US administration's policy to build a wall between the United States and Mexico. It has since invited further thought and a deeper contemplation on the lack of freedom of movement during countrywide lockdowns in the continued global pandemic. Borderless is a vehicle to express an alternate narrative to a culture of separation and division prevalent in the news of our time.
The ancient Chinese scroll format was originally intended to provide cultural information or to teach moral values. Scrolls were said to span a great variety of subject matter, from political commentary to epic romances and religious tales, allowing readers to immerse themselves deep within narratives. Historically, scrolls were also occasionally used to reflect an artist's criticism of certain government tactics or policies. A scroll lacks the same boundaries of the codex book form, allowing the images to flow from one another across time and space. These prints, created independently in each artist's studio, give rise to the meeting of eight different universes, conversing together to create one. These prints celebrate the diversity of style, line, form and interpretation of each contributing voice, an organic serendipitous culmination of narrative. The scroll resists a constructed preconceived reading, allowing the viewer space for contemplation and to gather connections across the pages. Borderless is a place where each artist has come together to create a bridge between our independent practices and socio-political concerns by communing with one another and inviting space for reflection. Mariko's print, Night Garden, is a borderless floral pattern that can be repeated endlessly, albeit slightly imperfectly. Yun Mi's Book of Bamboo print depicts open pages of the Mustard Seed Garden Manual of Painting book, a woodblock printed painting manual from 17th century China. It is significant as an important painting manual that spread widely throughout Asia at that time and still continues to spread worldwide. It's also an important example of early colour woodblock printing in China. Throughout history, it was published in many different countries in different languages using a variety of techniques from woodblock to offset printing. It continues to be enjoyed by many artists all over the world. When considering the theme of borderless, she thought this book would be an apt metaphor for print media crossing borders across space and time. For Katie, outside and in the open is a woodblock image that alludes to evacuation from a crisis. A narrative landscape this imagery tells the story of a meeting place where two people come together to consider what to do next. Infringing on each other's personal space, the figures overlap. After all, they find themselves in this situation together. Although individuals, their predicament is borderless. For Kate, everywhere she looked had borders, whether political, personal or physically physical, and she initially struggled to imagine borderless as a concept. It all seemed hopeless, considering the political divide and the borders that were being put in place. She set out to make a print which might help her come to terms with what was happening to our world. These thoughts led her to the night sky, the darkness, the quietness. There was a silence gifted by COVID-19 because planes were no longer flying leaving the sky free of pollution and open to the stars shining brighter. She thought of the vast sky as a never-ending space, the immensity of the universe, but in a way connecting us together, a blanket under which we all lie. Melissa's nest print takes inspiration from observed organic forms, the natural landscape and her immediate surroundings. At times, she offers the viewer two options simultaneously, presenting images as broad vistas and as microscopic investigations. These scapes, as she calls them, may contain a horizon, yet offer a view into a smaller, contained environment. Each composition aims to present a new compilation of visual notations, continually building and rearranging and playing with a growing visual alphabet. For me, the under one moon print is a gathering of touch. Pairs of coupled hands are traced from Utamara's Prelude to Desire series of Ukiyo-e Shunga prints. These eight sets of hands, originally intended to depict intimacy in their private tatami rooms, are now gathered together on one page, under one moon. There are no clues to gender, no borders between bodies, simply a merging of touch with the desire for connection 
at a time of isolation. Living through a time we are told that touch is dangerous, fatal even, in combination with the knowledge of new research telling us we need eight hugs or touch interactions per day to maintain our well-being. The sense of caress required throughout the entire Mukhanga process sustained me. Gauging the depth of the carving, the dampness of the paper, the consistency of ink and nori, the amount of pressure placed on the baron, all by touch, provides a sensual experience for the artist. In a similar way, Mia depicted the sensual experience of feeling moonlight in the woods in her print by using sumi ink and mica to express the quality of the moonlight. For Mia, this project offered her the opportunity to understand multiple realities, rich in different in differences and experiences. For Patty, her concept for borderless originated as a response to human migration and the artificiality of inequitable political borders. As time progressed, the pandemic hit and those borders went into lockdown. However, the virus did not recognise those borders, mapping the paths of global human contact. Patty imagined the creation of a metaphor with the medium that the surface of the paper could be a borderless environment in how it reacts to light. She chose aluminium pigment to use in combination with sumi to create a contrast of surface on the washi. The aluminium reflects light while the sumi absorbs light. She printed the sumi on both sides to demonstrate the possibilities of looking through into the back of the paper. The image references weaving. As a group, we weave our ideas of Mokohanga with one another and the processes of our teachers. Sumi has an aesthetic quality unique to itself, a quality enveloping the senses that can bring the artist into a mystical space, like that one might find on a peaceful walk in nature. The colour, ranging from blue-black to warm, deep brown, suggests the presence of shadows, layers of forms that we can use to identify our place in the world. Sumi also describes the outlines and borders of objects, showing the inherent patterning and design in the visual world. As Patty so beautifully says, the artist is paying attention all the time to the senses, particularly to the sense of touch. Because of this intimacy with the medium, the poetry and soul of the artist is revealed at every step of the process. We have each been influenced by working side by side with one another, and for Melissa, it was a transformational experience influencing the way she thinks about her work technically, stylistically and conceptually. Collaborating has been an experience we've all cherished. Kate feels the universe meant for us all to come together in some way, to create a rewarding and important connection. She loves how easy things are between us, uncomplicated and non-egotistical. She incorporated this sense of collaboration in her concept, staying conscious that two prints would join hers on either side, which would then become part of the whole, all eight prints becoming one. Through a commitment to the possibilities of collaboration and regular conversations online, we have cultivated a community which has held us together during unpredictable and uncertain times. The ease of working together and the support Generosity and reassurance that it brings continues to connect us beyond the residency. This collaboration has been brimful of admiration, encouragement and compassion. It is in this spirit that we hope to inspire other artists to gather, to share thoughts and ideas about Mokohanga and to realise its full potential for artistic expression. The story of this scroll is one of connection between us as artists, between countries, between the past and the present of woodblock printing, as well as the vital connection we all have to each of our teachers. Thank you.